Hi everybody, I'm back in the shop and I've got a new real gear project to share with you. Um, I'm making a drive gear for an antique milling machine um, that's probably older than I am. Hope you enjoy it. Our project for today is to make a, a drive gear for a Kearney and Trekker 2H, I believe. Um, it's one of those components that seems to be hard to find for people. And uh, they'll have the machine, they'll have the universal head, but they don't have the drive gear that actually attaches to the spindle on the machine. And, and that's a problem, of course. So um, a friend of mine online, Greg at My Little Mule, um, was kind enough to allow me to use him as a guinea pig uh, to see if I could make a gear to his spec that would uh, satisfy the requirements of the machine. So he was able to send me a fair bit of information, uh, but no drawing. So uh, this is a little bit of a crapshoot. Uh, I think it's going to work. I think the gears are all standard. There's no profile offsets or anything like that. So uh, we're going to give it a shot. So this gear is DP9, 14 and a half degree pressure angle. The helix angle is 27 degrees, 16 minutes. So 27 degrees, 16 minutes, and that equals 27.26666. Seven degrees. That obviously that's a repeating decimal, but uh, but anyway. So um, the gear is twenty-four teeth. The bore is one inch. The width is 0.875 inches, but the width of the hub is 1.175. So the gear is going to look like this in cross section. So for the gear profile, the whole depth equals 2.157 over the DP. And that is 0.2396 something, so, but I'm gonna call it 0 0.240 inches. So that's the whole depth. Um, the pitch diameter is equal to Z over DP cosine beta, where Z is the tooth count, D, DP is the DP, and cosine beta is cosine of the helix angle. And that, for this case, turns out to be exactly three inches, near enough. Uh, the addendum, that's the bit of the tooth above the pitch line, between the pitch line and the tip, is 1 over the DP, and that equals 0.1111. Um, the OD equals the pitch diameter plus 2 times the addendum, and without writing it down, so it's three plus two times that number, and that turns out to be 3.2222 inches. So that's the OD that we have to put on our blank. The lead that we have to put into our machine is pi times the pitch diameter divided by the tangent of beta. And for this case, that's, that works out to be 
265. And again, the only reason I carry that out to that uh, extent is you want to come as close as you can to, to baking that lead into your uh, lead compensation train. So uh, for my machine, the, the ratio is the ratio that I'm shooting for for the uh, lead compensation train is 120. That's my machine constant for that train, 120 to 1, divided by 10 times the lead. So that's, I think that's all there is. It's 10 times the lead, yeah. So, um, Put a long line there for some reason. Anyway, that turns out to be 0 0.656302. So that's the ratio that I'm trying to achieve uh, for my uh, lead compensation train. So I went to my, uh, my favorite website for doing change gear calculator. And if you just put in change gear calculator on the web, you'll get probably two or three websites. This one is, is run by a guy named Nico, Nikoslav, I believe. He, I expect that he's Polish, uh, but it's a really cool little calculator and uh, you can use it for a lot of things actually. Um, in this case, I needed to find a change gear set that had uh, that was made up of gears that I actually had. So in this case, I picked one that was 47 tooth, 81 tooth, 95, and 84. I've got all the change gears up to the 90s, up to 90. Uh, I only have a couple in the 90s decade, so I still need to make those. But anyway, I have these gears, so that's my lead compensation tray. So once again, on my machine, just to draw it the way it is, um, A drives B, B drives C, C drives D. So A is moving at the table feed uh, rotation, table feed screw rotation. D is turning at the output ratio, uh, so it would be 0.656 of that. And then there's 120 to 1 ratio between D and the actual work spindle. Feed compensate or lead compensation tray. So that's the that's the story. I have nothing but respect for the YouTube machinists that keep their machines sparkling clean. However, as you will have noticed by now, I am not one of them. But still, 
It's nice to have at least the first layer of chips knocked off before I start work for the day. There we go. Well, the next bit is just basically the production of the blank. And uh, th this is a pretty long video, and some of this stuff um, you may have seen before, but I'm not sure I recall ever showing the whole process of making a, a helical gear. So uh, I'm just going to let this one run. I'm going to let it be long, and uh, you all know how to use the fast forward if uh, you're so inclined. Well, this part here is about machining a boss on one face of the gear. Uh, it's also a mini tutorial on what happens when the uh, cutting speed's too high and the tool might be just a little bit dull. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Yeah, that right there. That red glow that indicates things are getting just a little too warm. Normally it's not a, a super bad thing, but it's not really where you wanna be with any kind of tooling. So having said all that, it, it's gonna take me about another three passes before I realize I ought to just turn the speed down a little bit.
There, see how much better that is? <laughs> I crack me up sometimes. Baby. That'll do. That'll do. That's really nice. I bet when that blank cools off, it'll be just a hair tight, but that's okay. What we're fighting, fighting for is concentricity. That's why we did the the uh, arbor over centers, which I don't do very often. And it came out within a few tenths concentricity over the centers, which I'm assuming means this is concentric with this is concentric with the centers. And if we get a tight fit there, then the quick operation. Three sixteenths diameter. I'll make it about three sixteenths deep. There we go. That's it. Little, just a little feature that ought to disappear when uh, when this. Well, it just takes a minute to touch up the uh, center, the drive center, or the center on the drive end of the lathe. Um, I think most experienced machinists know why you do this, but for the benefit of the uh, relatively uninitiated like me, um, doing this, putting a center on uh, like this, uh, takes all the sources of runout out of the equation. You're basically turning around the true center of rotation. 
So uh, theoretically, you're going to take the run out of, the, of that center point to zero. Well, this section in here, I'm just going to do his voiceover. Um, I'm taking off the drive shaft in preparation for changing the table angle. I need to loosen the four clamp bolts that uh, are on the bottom of the saddle. And then I swing the table to its new angle, which in this case has to be... Um, the helix angle plus uh, the lead angle of the hob, which in this case is a little over two degrees. So uh, instead of 27 and change, it should look like, I need to subtract it. So it should look like 25 and change um, on, the, on the protractor that's on the table. I'm fitting the the hob, putting the outboard support on. This section I'm just putting the drive shaft on. Uh, it's a little out of frame, sorry about that. In this section, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I've got enough table travel uh, to accommodate the uh, super long arbor that I made. Um, the reason that I did the arbor the way I did was because the bore diameter on this gear is one inch, and I had to make a new arbor for that. Um, and essentially, because it's one inch, I can put uh, stair steps of different arbor sizes on the same thing, uh, or on the same arbor. So consulting my much-loved and pretty grimy 
table of change gears. I want to do 24 teeth. So without the contra rotation, that means the C to B ratio is 22 over 20. So with gears that I have, that'll be 44 over 40. Um, so all I have to do is change out one gear on the uh, index train to get to 24 teeth. Good deal. Uh, this is changing out the, the gear on the index train, also a little out of frame. Uh, it's one of those scenes that I didn't really capture very well. Well, we've had the test run. Everything seems to be working okay. Now it's time to uh, reset the lead compensation train. This is one of those things that I always have to kind of stop and just make sure that I'm getting this right because uh, there's nothing that'll screw up this gear faster than getting the wrong lead uh, programmed into the mechanics of the system. So if this seems a little hesitant, uh, there's a good reason for that. I'm just double checking my work. Well, because this is a right-handed helical gear that we're making, I have to put the idler in the lead compensation train so that the direction of the lead compensation is reversed. It was set up for a left-handed gear. This one's going to be right, so I need the idler. Well, if you look real close, you can see the little scratch on the, the OD of the gear. I just wanted to make sure that the lead compensation was working as it should. Um, so that was just a quick test. And then um, what we'll do here in just a second is we'll touch off the, um, the tool against the OD of the gear and that sets our diameter reference that we'll use to set the whole depth of the cut.
Well, what's coming up here pretty soon is a time lapse of all three passes uh, that it took to make this gear. The first pass was 100 thou, the second pass was 200 thou, and the third pass was 240 thou. And basically all I do is just drop down the table by about 25 thou, disengage the table feed and run it back um, to where the gear clears and then raise it up to the next uh, step. So 100 thou, 200 thou, and then the third step is the whole depth of 240 thou. too bad. Needs a little bit of uh, deburr. Well, there it is. My metal stamping is not going to set the world on fire, but this is a 24 tooth 9DP gear. And uh, it didn't come out too bad. Um, I'm going to send it to um, I'm going to send it to Greg and see what he thinks. Um, he'll probably have to do a little bit of fitting uh, to get this on his uh, spindle, but I think it's pretty much to spec. Um, and we'll just see if it, uh, if it doesn't work. I told him it came with a money back guarantee. Well, you all know I believe in full disclosure. So I have to be honest, the gear in, in these pictures uh, when I was doing kind of the final run through of my math, I caught a mistake and it actually made the gear about 25 thousandths bigger than it should have been. And um, I was tempted to try to recut it, but um, in the end, I decided to make a new blank and recut the gear because, you know, practice makes perfect and stuff. So, uh, anyway. Um, this gear that's on screen right now is the actual article that I'll be sending to Greg. And it came out just fine. Has the right tooth number and everything. Thanks for watching.